Hi, Hiram here. You know, the last couple of days I've been doing tests on this Out D stove. I'm not even going to try saying the full length name. You know what I mean? Uh, I had to agree with a couple of people. This thing looked familiar. And I've had several tell me that it looks like one of those rigs that you use for uh, cooking chicken on your grill. You know, where you put a beer can in this and then stick the chicken down over top of it. And I thought, yeah, that's where I remembered it from. Then I got, it's a little hard to breathe in here. The temperature's getting high. Anyway, uh, then I got a comment from Ted Zimmerman where he said, The Out D stove is a Chinese knockoff of an American-made Simon Safe Sport alcohol stove that was popular in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. You can still find them once in a while on eBay. And then he was like, yeah, that's what it was from. I remember a buddy of mine had one of these. He did a lot of bicycle camping, and he had one of these things. So that's probably where it was sticking in the back of my mind. <clears throat> now the thing is, about it being a Chinese knockoff, I know he said it was American made, but I did some exploring on eBay, on uh, the internet. I'll leave a bunch of links down below. Can't find a whole lot of stuff about this, but from most of the stuff that I found, they said that it was made in China, even when it was the Simon Safe Sport. So it's not so much a knockoff as it is they're the ones that probably made it. The only difference that I can see from the pictures is that maybe the Simon's Safe Sports didn't have this spring or it was covered up. Uh, don't even get me started, you know, on all these companies now are saying that uh, the Chinese are stealing all kinds of, an I of ideas and stuff when most of the manufacturing companies sent stuff to China to be made like fancy machines, fancy lathes and stuff like that and they think that they're not going to copy them they don't have to steal, we give it to them anyway, that's a rant, forget it, sorry I think these were made in China and now since they don't sell them anymore they just keep making them in China. Oh, here's the thing. When I back in my old days, when I used to do spelunking, I had a Safe Sport carbide lantern, and this is what it said on the bottom. Here's a picture of the bottom of one. It said "Made in Hong Kong expressly for Safe Sport manufacturing." So even though it came from Safe Sport, it doesn't mean that it was made in America. But uh, anyway. That's my little rant. What I want to go on to more today is one of the things that's missing on this is some sort of a simmer device. And I've been playing with a couple of simmer rings. <clears throat> uh, one guy had pretty much the same idea I did. BSA on belay said for a simmer ring, cut a quarter sized hole in the lid. I don't have the equipment for cutting into uh, stainless steel. So what I was doing was uh, taking tin cans. I have a Black & Decker Dremel type tool. Here's a picture of it. This is what I use for cutting cans and stuff. I can put the can on the base, set the uh, Dremel tool for the height I want, and then cut them off. So what I have here are a couple of attempts that I did. Oh, let me put some alcohol in here. Uh, I tried three different versions here. Let's get this going. The first one I did was a just the bottom of a I think this is like an 8 ounce tomato paste or tomato sauce can. This might be, yeah, just like this. Cut that off. Got the base and then I punched a hole in it that the hole is about, what, uh, 1.35 inches across or about 3.4 millile millimeters. The height on this is uh, 2.56 inches. I thought this might work. It covers up the holes. But it turned out, let's get this hot, that this wasn't quite tall enough. I'm not sure if I can put this on here without putting it out, but we shall see. 
Yep, put it out. Darn it. That's the thing with this stove. You've got, to, you've got to make sure it's hot before you can put a simmering on there. <clears throat> so let me just go over the other one. Then my second attempt, I made it a little bit taller, same size hole on the inside. But this time it's... Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I screwed that up before. This one was 0.17 inches tall. This one's 0.94 inches tall, almost an inch tall. And then this covered up the jets on the side and it didn't leak out. The first one, it covered the jets, but flame still kept coming out through the bottom. And then a third attempt that I did was just the same size can, cut the top off. <clears throat> uh, this is 0.68 inches tall, and this acts more like a focuser. If I can get this hot, I should have done this earlier, darn it. Okay, let's see what happens. This is the first one, the short top with hole in the middle. Oh, of course, now it doesn't leak. Now there it was starting to leak. See, I don't know if you can see on the side here. Anyway, it, it focuses down the, uh, the flame. But earlier, when I first tried it, it leaked out through the bottom. So I went to a taller lid, almost an inch tall. And then with this, I had no problems at all. Let's see if this is hot enough to... Okay, so it looks like that. Hopefully you can see the flames on this. Now if there's an interest, I'll do boil tests with this, but you know, you've seen one flame, you've seen them all. And the third one, <coughs> just I just wanted to see what this would do. This kind of covers up the jets and makes them come up through the middle. And it kind of made a flame like that. A large flame but kind of focused it in the middle of the stove, which I thought was pretty cool if you wanted to use a smaller pot. So that was the third type. These are all ones that you can just kind of play with. Now you could go back, the second one that I had, the one that's taller with the hole in the middle, put that on like so. Okay, now this one's leaking out. There we go. So once you have it like this, you've got it running the whole bit. You could actually have one of your lids that you cut off with a side cutter. Oh, all of these were cut with side cutters. But you can have yourself a lid. And this, you can put on the top and regulate the, whole, the flame size. Now I'm not sure if this will keep burning if you turn the flame down so low. It might not heat up the stove enough to uh, you know keep the flames going but you could at least do that and you could snuff it out with that. Okay, the thing that comes up with this then is I'll put the weights and stuff down below but this lid my sec or this simmer ring my second one the focusing ring and these are probably hot. Nope. And the snuffer. These three things actually weigh less than that. So if you could just leave this behind, I mean, it's not like you can use this is just for snuffing. You can't keep alcohol in the burner and transport it or anything. So you could actually leave this at home, take these three parts, and still be, you know, a couple of grams under. I'll put the weights down below. But, you know, something you could play with. Okay, so that's, you know, what I've been playing with for simmer rings. They might be interesting. Give it a try. I thank Ted Zimmerman for his comment and for bringing back to mind where this, where I saw this before. I thank BSA on, BSA on Belay for his uh, simmer ring idea with a, he said a quarter quarter size, so I guess he's talking about a hole the size of a quarter. This is considerably larger, but this is the punch I have. 
But I thank both of them for their comments. I thank you for watching. I look forward to your input, questions, remarks, helpful suggestions. And as always, watch for my buddy Max. Bye now.